Well, uh, welcome to Wednesday, hump day. Very rainy hump day. Let me check my fuel. Yeah, I'm going to fill up this morning. Wallet, yeah, got the wallet. We had some crazy storms last night. Uh, finally hit the uh, Katy area all throughout the like the southwest corner of uh, the Houston metro. Finally got it late last night and it rolled through the entire area. Massive thunder and lightning storm. Uh, we were having like 10 lightning strikes a second. It was bizarre. I recorded a little bit of video at 2.30 in the morning when it woke me up. I couldn't believe it. Shit is crazy, man. Lightning strikes every tenth of a second. It's just crazy. It was just constant flash, 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 flash. I mean, the, the sky never stopped going off. It looked like blue fireworks. It was pretty bizarre. Anyway, I'm on the road. Wet, probably. Gonna find out. <laughs> Go over and fill this thing up. Head into my warehouse and uh, work made of mine is gonna meet me there. We're gonna go grab a quick breakfast and uh, find some work for the day. Somebody was asking me in the comments uh, in one of my videos, I uh, just saw it last night, I haven't answered uh, any comments yet, uh, asking if I use rain mode on this. It's funny that that question came up because yesterday was the first time I ever really tried rain mode on this bike. I'd never, I just never use it. Uh, I mean, obviously I've tried it out just to see what the throttle map feels like, but I've never really ridden with it. And uh, yesterday in the rain, I did ride with it on, but you know, I ended up switching back to normal mode almost immediately because I'm used to the throttle take up uh, in that map and how it's gonna respond and how much uh, juice I need to give it to make it get out of the way of traffic, you know, that sort of thing. But it's very tractable in rain mode. The engine isn't real aggressive the throttle isn't snatchy or anything like that but uh, I usually run mine in this user mode where I've got the uh, power turned all the way up the traction at the lowest level you can't disable it in this mode as easily you can do it like you can disable traction control on one-off situations but you got to do it like every time you turn the bike on and off uh, so anyway power all the way up traction uh, intervention all the way down engine braking kind of at medium and DCT set at the lowest setting so it shifts early and uh, it that's where I normally ride this thing if it's not in the uh, in this custom mode that I've set up or user mode then uh, I'll leave it in normal or standard occasionally I'll go to sport when I'm riding hard uh, and I want the RPMs to hang high uh, and the downshifts to be a lot more aggressive, but uh, skip it, leave it in uh, this user mode and it's great. Now, one thing to note about these is uh, there's only one user mode or one custom setting uh, on the Rebel DCT where the other Honda bikes with uh, DCT have two or three custom settings. Uh, yeah, I want to say there's three in the AT. I can't be sure. Anyway, man, look at all this on the road. This is how crazy the rain was last night. We were getting 60 mile per hour winds and just torrential downpour for about an hour. I don't even know how much rain we got as far as rainfall total, but I'm sure it was at least two inches uh, in you know 30 or 45 minutes that it was really coming down. It's pretty crazy. Crazy, crazy. And you can tell all this area right here was flooded. This was uh, this was a low spot because the uh, piles of you know, debris that were floating in the water. <clears throat> oh 
almost continued on, forgot I needed to stop and get gas. I just looked at the uh, gauge. <laughs> uh, autopilot. I need fuel. I could make it probably to work and back on what's here, but why risk it? You gonna let me go? Thank you. Alrighty then. My normal spot. I'm a creature of habit. Ugh. Come on, back up, you heavy pig. Back up, pig. You gotta watch out doing this too. If you uh, accidentally grab a handful of throttle on the DCT, it'll uh, try to lurch away from you. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Alright, fuel time. I guess I need to uncork my new gloves today. This uh, Velcro is so gone it doesn't stick anymore. And the, they're rather beat to hell. A rip in the back of the palm and the knuckles took a beating. I'm glad it was those knuckles that took a beating and not my knuckles during that uh, down in uh, October. Fuel prices are up. 307 for base, 332 for mid, and uh, 357 for premium. Okie dokie. Feed it some mid grade. That's usually what I run in this. Uh, this thing has lived its uh, life on a steady diet of mid-grade. That was another question I got in the comments on YouTube uh, recently. Uh, and I've had this comment or question several times about, you know, why do you put uh, premium or, you know, why do you put base unleaded or why do you do this or why do you do that? The uh, Rebel owner's manual specifies 86 pawn or pump octane number, a minimum of 86. So... This motor isn't really high compression. I think it's 10.5 to 1. It could be 10.1 to 1. I think it's 10.5. Anyway, whoa. Uh, it doesn't need super, super high compression, or su uh, super high octane, because it's not high compression. Uh, it's not force inducted or anything like that. No turbo, no supercharger. Oh, I went one penny over. That's fine. Look at there. Um... So it's not really going to make use of uh, higher octane fuel. Been through that fuel discussion before. However, the one thing that uh, the higher grade fuels, premium, and uh, you know, depending on which station you're at, obviously, uh, those can have more additive packages in them uh, to run potentially cleaner. You know, more detergents and things like that to help the engine run a little bit uh, healthier over the long term. But I uh, usually just run mid-grade in this thing. Wake up. Record my mileage stats as I always do. recorded time to hit the road go out there and plan traffic which is gonna suck absolutely Houston rush hour in the morning on wet roads at least it's not raining but yeah it's gonna be gonna be one of those slow creeping commutes getting tire splash from everybody welcome to the life of a moto commuter shower when I'm trying to leave. Come on, people. Roll. I 
haven't been over to check Sam's uh, fuel prices. Sam's out on I-10. Uh, they used to be consistently uh, cheaper than anywhere else around here, and then they went up to, you know, on par with it, and the fuel lines there weren't way worth waiting in, just like uh, at Costco. The lines for fuel at Costco will be 20 cars deep, four lanes wide sometimes, and I don't get it. It's not that much cheaper than anywhere else, so what's the draw? It's crazy. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I used to buy fuel at Sam's all the time, but it's hard to get in and out of there, and uh, the prices weren't very good. But lately, I passed by there and seen that they're 10 cents, 15 cents cheaper a gallon than uh, over here in my neighborhood. So, I don't know. Maybe it's worth giving them a shot again. Yeah, look at all the stuff on the roads. This is all uh, flooding and uh, tree debris. You can see mud built up in the center. So, these roads must have been really flooded. And considering how deep this queue is, I don't know if I want to play this game. Hmm. This is going to suck. There's really no alternate route for me to get to where I need to go, especially the uh, HOV lane. So maybe I end up uh, splitting here and annoying people. Well, more technically, filtering. Filtering, not splitting. There's a difference. <laughs> Nobody stopping, just rolling. Yeah, it's a four-way stop, you shits. It's that guy's turn, let him go. Assholes. Four-way stop. Yeah, there was a lot of flooding on this road because all this mud. And this guy's gonna. Yep, I knew it. Fucking moron. Never even looked. Gotta be proactive. Yeah, this road flooded. Must have had some really nasty winds to knock all the tree branches down. I didn't notice it in my neighborhood as much as right over here, so must have been localized winds. Lost a lot of tree. Crazy. I don't want to drive over that one. That one might hurt me. These won't hurt me. Anyone need a mirror? Lost a fence. Yeah, we had some bad straight line winds last night. I saw my trees ripping around in my backyard. I was wondering if the uh, gazebo and the uh, the trampoline were going to take off and end up in the neighbor's yards, but nope. And here's where I filter because this is just not going to be any fun. stop people come on two at a time opposing sides real simple yeah trees down everywhere man weather report that I read last night uh, that popped up on my phone was saying uh, 60 mile an hour winds and penny sized hail so you know, what, not quite half inch hail luckily we didn't get any of the hail otherwise my cars would look like they have acne 
<laughs> growing up in Oklahoma, man, oh, that was awful. The hailstorms there are just insane. I've been through plenty of hailstorms, uh, more than a dozen. The, the stones were so big, not only were they denting the metal of the cars, they were taking out the windshields and the back windows and stuff like that. Side windows didn't usually get punched out because the hail comes more down. But, uh, yeah, safety glass, no less. You know, windshields, uh, you know, not the tempered glass that shatters easily, but windshields and rear windows with the polymer layer in there that keeps everything together. Getting punched through by hailstones. Damn. I was working at Target in my uh, late teens. Uh, Target in Oklahoma City at uh, the mall uh, on May Avenue and uh, Memorial. Anyway, uh, real bad hailstorm came through one night and it was rather sudden. I mean, everybody knew that it was raining and the weather was bad, but the hail was very unexpected and very brutal. Uh, it was baseball up to almost grapefruit-sized hail and it just an onslaught that lasted 15 or 20 minutes. It was just surreal. It was almost biblical. It was so crazy. And there were a lot of customers at the store at that time. I mean, we had probably 150-plus cars uh, in the parking lot. And people were standing at the front windows of the store just crying literally just in tears their cars were so battered they weren't even recognizable most of the people couldn't even drive their cars away they had to have them towed uh, the, all the windows were broken uh, hoods were beaten in it was just uh, it's awful all the car dealers in the area all throughout uh, southern Edmond and northern Oklahoma City uh, had to take I think it was almost 100% losses on all the inventory that was on their lots was insane. Luckily, right before that uh, that storm kicked into high gear, I ran outside and moved my car, and I put it over in the trash uh, area, the loading dock on the side of the building, and the, the wind was blowing the opposite direction, so I didn't take a whole lot of beating. I mean, I had a, a, a beater of a car. It was a, an old hoopty, but I didn't want it turned inside out and flooded. <laughs> Surprisingly, the highway doesn't look all that bad yet. If I can get over there to the HOV, that's the question. So this is when I'll usually switch to uh, standard mode. Give me a little bit more uh, poke, you know, higher shift points than uh, that custom map that I use. find somebody sleeping. I don't like doing this around these big trucks because it can get a little dicey. But I'm running out of road and I need in there so I think I'm going to have to uh, be a little bit unfriendly here. Sorry, I'm in. Bye-bye. accident. No, nope, that might be a ticket.
watching a Revzilla helmet review this morning that just dropped on the Shoei Neotech 3. And the, the review on it was basically exactly what Gus on the Rebel 11 told me. He said that the only real changes are the face shield and the locking mechanism down at the bottom center, which might be a good thing. Uh, and the uh, visor has been revised just a little bit around the pivots on the sides. And supposedly that's under the premise of reducing wind noise or whatever, but that means you can't use the older Neotech 2 face shields or pen locks probably. So anyway, uh, I bought a Neotech 2 when they went on sale at Revzilla Cycle Gear for 200 bucks off. They were normally $7.99, they dropped to $5.99. So I thought, woohoo, all right, I got one. But I haven't unboxed it on the possibility of sending it back, but now it's been over 30 days, so it's moot point. But uh, I was thinking, you know, if the Neotech 3 makes it out and it's a significant upgrade, then I might return the Neotech 2 because I haven't worn it yet and get the Neotech 3. But I'm glad that I didn't because the Neotech 3 is 100 bucks more. It comes in at 900 bucks now, 899. And it's not really that big of an improvement. I mean, it's just a variation on a theme with very minor tweaking. So it's not a, not a revolutionary design. And in my opinion, that's probably not worth 100 extra bucks. Certainly not the 300 extra bucks uh, 400 extra bucks pretty much uh, between the sale price that I got and the new price now of the three. So yeah, anyway, back to my thought. I'll probably uncork my Neotech 2 today and uh, mount up the camera and the audio gear and all that on it. I have a brand new mount from Chin Mounts for it. I haven't ever tried Chin Mounts before. I, I know that a lot of people really like them and uh, I'm jumping into the fray there, jumping on that bandwagon, see how they go. I really like the the big aluminum arm mount that I had on my previous Shoei. It's just absolutely rock solid. That thing took two high-speed face plants and never budged. It was very impressive. I was surprised how well that thing held up. <coughs> Excuse me. So it went down on the scooter cannonball at 35 miles an hour, face plant on gravel. And then uh, on my October wreck, uh, last October, I face planted at 55 and slid, and it was still holding fast. I couldn't believe how well that thing held up. It was great. This guy's on the phone, I can tell. Weaving all over the damn road, can't maintain the speed.
I miss my old breakfast place. I used to go all the way down the HOV and uh, turn around at the end there and go back to World uh, Bakery. World Catering and Bakery, that was it. But <sighs> during my absence from riding and commuting, they changed owners. Uh, apparently somebody new came in, bought them up, revamped the place. Uh, They revamped the place, painted the outside, and basically doubled the prices from what I understand. <laughs> Man, uh, my buddies uh, went there to eat breakfast uh, a couple, three weeks ago and said, ouch, stay away. Uh, three guys eating, you know, our normal breakfast routine that would have cost us maybe 40 bucks for the three of us uh, went up to like 78. What? That's crazy, man. It's breakfast, it's eggs, bacon, toast. How do you get 78 bucks out of that? So we haven't been back. And now it's time to find a new uh, decent breakfast joint. I swear, I've, I've threatened it so many times just because of the trouble that I've had uh, over the last 20 plus years here in Houston. Uh, I've threatened to open my own little breakfast place and I don't want to be in the restaurant business, but <laughs> you know, there's just no good cheap breakfast places uh, here anymore, period. Not even fast food. I mean, hell, you go to Whataburger down here on the corner to get a uh, a sausage and sausage egg and cheese biscuit. It's gonna cost you six bucks with tax. What? Just for the biscuit? That's not including coffee and you know, hash browns and everything else. Damn, man. Eggs aren't that expensive. I know, you know, the WF is trying to force us all into eating bugs, but chickens aren't that uh, scarce yet. Which that whole thing doesn't make sense. I won't get into the politics of it, but let's just look at the, the basic logic. What do chickens normally eat? No, it's not grains. No, it's not uh, free-range, grass-fed bullshit. What do they eat? They eat bugs. They're omnivores. They eat bugs, grubs, grain, if there is some. But uh, <laughs> chickens are not normally uh, uh, vegan, vegetarian. They're little scavengers, man. They're mean little dinosaurs. You ever see uh, chickens take out uh, predators in their area? Mice, small rodents, anything like that? Oh man, they're like little velociraptors. They will absolutely shred them to nothing. It's crazy, it's like piranha on land. So anyway, eggs are cheap. Chicken and eggs in general are pretty much the cheapest meat there is. So why? in the flaming fuck should a traditional egg breakfast, you know, eggs and toast and all that, be 15 fucking dollars. Give me a break, man. It's getting so bad that you can't even get them at home for, uh, you know, make the meals at home for less than three or four dollars a plate. It's just insane, man economy is going to hell. Well, there's no such thing as economy here. It's an oxymoron. Economy is the conservation of a finite resource. <laughs> no such thing here. The Fed just prints money at will and dilutes and deludes uh, the uh, actual value of the currency. Anyway, I won't, I won't talk politics. <laughs> Get bitch on that all day. Anywho, I'm going to back the bike into the uh, garage here in case it uh, continues to storm for the rest of the day. And uh, go work. Maybe make enough money to pay for a breakfast. Jesus. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the day. Wednesday night. The skies have cleared and it's absolutely gorgeous out here. Uh, the air is fairly dry and crisp. It's barely 70 degrees. Uh, 69, 70. Just feels fantastic out here. It's breezy. <laughs> it's real breezy. We're getting 30 mile an hour gusts off and on, but it uh, feels good. 
might be a different story out on the highway, but we're getting ready to find out. Uh, speaking of winds and crazy stuff, let's see what time it is. What's the time? Uh, yes, uh, almost seven o'clock. Um, all that debris and nonsense that I rode through this morning, tornado damage, kids. Uh, I did not realize that we had a tornado that rolled through uh, Katie last night, uh, literally just about a mile and a half from my house. Not even, yeah, b- barely a mile and a half uh, straight. If you were to drive it, it's about uh, two and a half miles. So uh, just kind of barely northwest of me at uh, Mason Road and I-10, just south of I-10, uh, not even a quarter mile, uh, it flattened a uh, little uh, strip mall uh, sports bar over there, got nuked and uh, several other businesses were damaged and uh, it rolled through the neighborhoods and that was some of the uh, fence flattening that I saw this morning on the way to work. So yeah, crazy. Uh, (laughs) I moved out of Oklahoma to escape tornadoes and here they are coming to visit me again. I guess they missed me. They still missed me, damn it. Good, keep missing me. I don't like tornadoes. (laughs) It's funny, you know, I, I grew up in Oklahoma where it's just constant tornado and hail and ice storm and just bizarre weather left and right and uh you know everybody i knew there uh was asking me when i moved down here they said aren't you afraid to go down there you know they always have hurricanes and blah 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 and i'm like yeah hurricanes don't bother me (laughs) you can plan for those they're announced they're coming long in advance open there it goes uh (laughs) you have time to prepare for those tornadoes yeah they just drop down erase shit and leave there's no warning they 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 do what they want when they want and good luck if you're in their way uh (laughs) growing up there in oklahoma we learned at a very young age uh, just as kids if you hear the tornado sirens going off or if you hear the emergency broadcast service on tv or the radio you stop you listen because that could be your ass Uh, They don't set those things off for no reason. (laughs) That means danger close. It's coming for you. (laughs) If you're in the path and you can hear it, you're in trouble. Where are we going to go? Yeah, uh, just coincidentally last night when all the lightning was coming through, it woke me up. It was right at, uh, I don't know, about 2.15 to 2.20. I started hearing, you know, just constant rolling thunder. It sounded like a train. And I'm, you know, again, in my mind, growing up in Oklahoma, if you hear that sound, you pay attention because that's the sound of a tornado when it's coming through. Is uh, It's like a train. And it gets louder and louder and louder until it erases your house. And, <laughs> you know, I'm hearing this constant rolling thunder. And I'm seeing this lightning outside going, what in the hell is going on? And uh, I took a couple of uh, screenshots on my phone of the uh, radar track and all the crazy amounts of lightning that was going on and there were literally lightning strikes about every tenth of a second it was just blah 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 blah. i mean it was it was like strobe lights outside it looked like some freaky dystopian uh disco concert going on out in the clouds it was really surreal and that continued for well over 30 minutes uh, as the storm was rolling you know kind of i guess it was moving from southwest to northeast and uh it finally got to us and the wind picked up and uh, was starting to get a little bit crazy outside but before the rain even really started uh, I made the you know a little short recording on my phone a little video I'll throw it in here and uh, just looking at the the lightning was just spectacular it was insane I don't know how many direct uh, ground strikes there were but the estimates that I saw on the news said just in the Houston area there were 2,000 uh, direct strikes or you know cloud to ground strikes and that doesn't count all the cloud to cloud stuff which was really the light show it's pretty impressive my sister and I had a, it was our favorite pastime to go outside and watch the thunderstorms 
rolling in over the Oklahoma Plains because the neighborhood that we lived in was just flat, you know, it's totally flat everywhere. And we didn't have a lot of homes surrounding us, so we could see way off into the the fields, you know, half mile distance or whatever. And uh, you could just watch these amazing thunderstorms rolling in, the giant wall clouds and uh, just tons of lightning and uh, big rain heads, thunder heads, uh, dumping sheets and sheets of rain. It's amazing to watch kind of reminded me of that last night but I think last night's lightning storm that's probably the most impressive I've ever seen I can't recall one that I've ever watched that was uh, more energetic than that one it was nuts and then this morning I find out there was a tornado in it wow bizarre
Has anyone else noticed that Waze and uh, Google Maps, uh, the driving app, are way off in their estimates for traffic and uh, routing in the Houston area, particularly lately? I don't know if anybody uh, in the area is watching the vlogs, but right before I left the warehouse, I checked on Waze and it said that the traffic was really congested and it was going to take me 38 minutes to get home. Uh, I don't think so. I've been noticing a lot of weird routing errors with Waze lately as well. It'll say, you know, take the left lane to do something, but it's clearly a right lane turn, especially, you know, highway junctions and stuff like that. I don't know what's up with it. I've got to where I don't rely on it anymore because it's just wrong most of the time. I use it for rough directions only, not turn by turn, because it's uh, not giving correct lane direction. my neighborhood out here with the uh, maybe the lights are still screwed up uh, getting onto the surface streets going south I don't know I don't know how long the damage path was for the tornado take you guys over there to the uh, Mason Road uh, scene of the aftermath. Let's we'll see if we can get through there. It might be a little bit congested. Probably a lot of other looky-loos, just like I'm getting ready to be. down one more exit than I normally do here. This is uh, my usual exit, but Mason is the next one down. 
I looked up the address of the uh, bar that was leveled in you know, that little strip center. I think it was 820 South Mason or something like that. So it should just be a half mile or something uh, south of I-10. Not far away from me at all. Yeah, so I didn't pay attention to uh, exactly where this place was. I just saw the address in the rough area on the map where it is. And uh, I think it's down here on the, it'll be on my left side as I'm going down here. I think. I don't know, we'll find out. Keep your eyes peeled. Let's look for uh, tornado damage. It's a strip center with a uh, with a bar in it, and it's got a South Mason address, so it should be right here off of this street. Now, which side? I don't know. How far down? I don't know. But I would imagine we'll probably see some other gawkers. <laughs> There have been news crews out here in this neighborhood all day today, you know, getting eyewitness accounts and <laughs> disasters always bring out the uh, the looky lose. And I'm uh, I'm not one to talk. I'm not throwing stones, man. Here I am. <laughs> Woo! It's windy. This bike is heavy, and this bike's getting blown around underneath me. Keep your eyes peeled. You see it? You see it? Where is it? Where is it? It's got to be right in here. It's going to be pretty close. Eight twenty. Looking for uh, numbers. Don't really see numbers yet. hard to look at. Of course I'm going to look for stop traffic. It would be somewhere in this area. Maybe just a 
little bit further south. If it's 820, then uh, it can't be more than a statute mile south of I-10, because I think I-10 is the north-south divider. Don't do it. So somewhere right in here. It was a, a smaller strip center, kind of like that back there. Just judging by the pictures anyway. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go on the left side. Yeah, so I, I remember them talking about Firestone. Cool, I'm gonna pull in, why not? Uh, just wanna get hit from behind. Yeah, they got it marked off. So yeah, this Firestone I've been to uh, many times uh, to do alignment on my truck and tires and whatnot. So. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some close-up shots. Sign got ripped out. The whole uh, office area of that Firestone is gone. And apparently the bar is just like down that line, I think. Something like that. Okay, you don't want to turn? I'll go. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Me, 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 mine, mine. My turn. Do, 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 do. I'm going to just park right in there in that little uh, indentation if I can get over there without getting whacked. Oh, traffic is crazy. Well, maybe this other guy has the right idea. We'll just skip this and uh, put ourselves out here and go. Yeah, this will be easier to get in, and then I can kind of come up that line right there, and maybe we can get a good shot of it. Okay, well, we've got... Uh, parking pylons and fence posts in the median here. They got blown away. They got forcefully relocated. Let's see if we can get out here before uh, traffic comes through. You're going to make it? You're going to make it? You're going to make it? Oh, oh, oh! Get in there. Go. Go, Dopey. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? Drop my glove. I knew that was going to happen. I was trying to hang on to it. Let's see if I can get over here and take a look. I had an eyelash in my eye and I had to pull my glove off because it's eating my eyeball and it hurts a lot. <laughs> so it doesn't look like this part of the... Uh, shopping center has got damage, but definitely the uh, section down there does. And they'll have it cordoned off, I'm sure, so uh, people can't get back there and get into it, but we'll see how close we can get. Tobacco Express. Looks like they've got debris. What you doing there, buddy? Pizza Hut. Okay, welcome to Ground Zero. I'm going to park the bike right here and just go looking. Man, that did get flattened, didn't it? I'm not going to get in their business, but... Uh, wow. Oh yeah, this got flattened out. This side did okay. That did not. It just goes to show you how localized tornado winds can be. That's crazy. So, I'm not sure where the bar is. I guess maybe it was further back there, but yeah. Firestone, she's a flat. U-Haul uh, trailer turned on its side here. Is it a U-Haul or just a, a box trailer? Yeah, just a box trailer. Wow, it got picked up and slammed. Look at the frame. Oh, I gotta get my phone for some pictures of this. That thing got picked up and dropped, kids. The back end is accordioned in, so uh, it went airborne. I wonder where it was sitting before it landed on that light pole that was there. So, light pole like that, that was a vertical light pole. It's now folded and the trailer sitting on top of it. So this thing was airborne uh, pretty high at some point. Yikes.
I'm sure it looked even crazier this morning before uh, all the cleanup efforts. That sign took a beating. Let's get a shot here. Let's get the whole thing in frame if we can. There we go. Man, that's nuts. Just rubble and debris. So I wonder how much of this is demo from them using, uh, you know, heavy moving equipment and uh, shoveling it up versus how much was just scattered by the wind. Crazy. All right, well, we've seen. Let's get out of the way. Make more room for more gawkers. <laughs> Luckily, no one was hurt in this. I should mention that. You know, I'm not just some you know, sadist here. Uh, nobody was injured. Uh, everyone uh, got out of this uh, unharmed. Uh, luckily, it didn't go through and create, you know, real havoc in the neighborhoods over here behind it because it's a pretty densely populated area back over here. We've got uh, a lot of uh, shopping centers and uh, residential areas. There's uh, apartment complexes and neighborhoods in the area. So uh, it could have been bad and in the middle of the night. And, you know, this is Houston. We don't have... Uh, emergency warning sirens and all that kind of stuff here like uh, Oklahoma and other places have so I've always wondered about that in uh, you know hurricane season people know to be turning on the news and listening for it but those are long advance uh, incidents you don't have something that's just dropping in suddenly like a tornado uh, even you know rainstorms hailstorms you kind of you have a little bit of advance notice that those are coming but tornadoes, uh-uh. And there's no uh, warning infrastructure down here for that. So, yeah, good luck. We don't even get those kind of notices on our phones or any of that. So, yeah. At least in Oklahoma, you've got audible sirens. And yeah, I wouldn't say you can always hear it, but you can usually hear it. Uh, it you get enough advance uh, notice that uh, if as long as the rain isn't really loud, you know, like super loud thunderstorm, just, you know, the, the din of the rain and all that kind of drowns it out or you're real far away from it, deep in a neighborhood or something, you might not be able to hear the tornado sirens. But generally speaking, you can hear them. Uh, even in a pretty loud thunderstorm, you'll hear the wail of those sirens as they come rotating around. That the Doppler effect is what uh, is most uh, identifiable about them. It's not the the constant sound; it's the Doppler, the the rising, falling sound of the siren. Let's go. Jack off behind me and this Mercedes is about hitting me. What am I going to do, dude? I can't go anywhere. Are you uh, changing lanes or are you just thinking about it? Come on. Keep going. This is where uh, my wife and I ride our bikes. It's right through this trail right here. That's my wife's normal uh, stomping ground is uh, through the, the bike trails right down that line. I'm curious to find out if there are any uh, homes or anything else, you know, infrastructure damage through that area. Oh, 
stuff in the air. So let's see if there's any other damage over here. We eat uh, at the little uh, Chinese cottage uh, buffet over there. Well, not buffet, but yeah. Chinese cottage restaurant. Uh, this is our stomping ground. But yeah, see here, we've got you know, apartment complexes, uh, a big neighborhood right over here. There's a lot of, a lot of things that could have gone wrong last night. So if it were, if there were any uh, positive uh, tornado outcome, this is probably it. I'm not seeing any other damage through here, so it was just uh, probably downbursts that tore up a lot of these trees and fences over here. Could have been straight line winds, but usually if you've got a uh, tornado in close proximity somewhere, you get uh, flanking downdrafts that wreak havoc on uh, vertically standing items. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Live through that stuff. So right over in here was where I saw the fences down this morning. Yeah, there was one. The guy in front of me smoking weed. Yep, serious heavy. Woo! Smoking the skunk weed. Damn, I'm gonna get high before I get home. Woo, buddy. I'm backing off. I am. Stanky. Do people in cars not realize that other people can smell that? Drinking on the road, you know, sucking back on a tall boy. Yeah, people can see that. You don't do that. It's not socially acceptable. But smoking reefer in the car, yeah, nobody's gonna notice. Tree down, yeah. All the trees that were ripped up overnight. Smoking the ganja, man. <laughs> Y'all, the uh, debris that I'm seeing on the road, this morning I thought maybe it was uh, flooding residue you know from all the water standing water or something like that but uh more likely it's mulch out of these uh medians and stuff like that that got whipped up by the wind Yeah, I don't see any other 
damage anywhere else, so we got lucky. Definitely got lucky. Don't do it. Some tree branches here and there in the neighborhood that looks like they came down. We didn't have any uh, off of our tree that I noticed this morning. Big old pine trees we have in our front yard are uh, a little fragile sometimes. We notice that there are a lot of uh, snapped off, older, you know, somewhat dead branches laying in our yards after almost every... Uh, <laughs> having trouble with that mower. <laughs> she was stuck. Uh, after every storm, we'll, we'll see chunks of uh, branches in our yard. But the rest of the tree is still hanging in there. Alrighty, I'm back home. Dog is waiting for me. She hears the bike. Already howling. And <laughs> did you see her bowl get whipped across the driveway? You gonna howl? Huh? Howl again? Howl! 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 howl. Come on! Howl! howl. 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 Alright. <laughs> I'll catch y'all later.